Welcome to the University of Finley Art and Culture Show. My name is Sharenda, your host, and we are beginning our third season with our wonderful guest, Mr. John Rush. Welcome, John. Hey, thanks. <laughs> so glad to have you here in studio. It's nice to be here. It's fun to be you know, in a, a campus that has a great studio. So. Thank you. So John is on national tour right now, and you are a musician. Yes. And you are not just a musician of one instrument. You are a mus musician of multiple instruments in one instrument. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. A lot of people don't get that. Um, I play guitar and sing, and I make my guitar do almost anything you can think of. I, it sounds like a regular acoustic guitar. Um, it sounds like a, um, you know, then I switch to like a different uh, electric sounds like a Telecaster, Stratocaster, Les Paul. Um, then I can even do bass, drums, percussion, horns. piano, saxophone, I've heard full horn, horn section. sections. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing what you can do. It's um, it's fun stuff. It's cool toys, but it's all still live, so mm -hmm. people get to feel like you know, it's not just playing to tracks or anything like that. And you do this all over the country and the world, correct? Yeah, yeah. Not the world as much as I would like, uh, because it doesn't always route well. Uh huh. Um, but it's mostly colleges in the country. Uh huh. Yeah. And you do some fun scenes in some of the larger cities, also where they know you, and when you're there, you get to set in and and play some pretty cool known spots. Yeah, oh yeah, especially when I was in Nashville. Mm -hmm. I mean, I used to play six nights a week all over downtown. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, you know, now I'll play occasionally when I go back, but you know, it's not anywhere near like uh, the grind of doing six nights a week. Sure, <laughs> now you have the grind of getting in a um, car and getting in a plane and hoping everything coordinates correctly so you can get to your spots. Yeah, there's, there's an actual, a real, skill to learning how to tour yes um, and a lot of people don't get it and they they just burn out and mm -hmm. they can't do it mm -hmm. and um, and then I see people like Adele who decide they do one tour and they say I'm never gonna go on tour again and it's like you had tour buses private jets everybody sets everything up for you how tough was your life? <laughs> you know, she's like, I'm just going to go to Vegas. I'm just going to do my shows in Vegas. She wants but, to stay. She'll stay someplace, and the people can come to her. Yeah, that must be nice. Yeah, easier <laughs> on the body, I'm guessing. I guess. I'm going to see the same thing every day. Yeah. I like touring. Good. So. Well, and I know you enjoy working with the students and yeah. and meeting different people and. And I also know that you set it in, uh, with the musicians sometimes and just do some some. Um, open free play so yeah you know a lot of times now lately with the shows um, with kind of the hybrid show that I've been doing my original show was the human iPod show mm -hmm. um, where I play guitar and sing and I take requests mm -hmm. the whole time um, and then I saw people doing live band karaoke and I thought well, well I already know a gazillion songs mm -hmm. I could do that and and now it, it's kind of fun to do a hybrid where I start off playing and they request songs they want me to do and then somewhere around you know halfway through we switch over and try to get them up to sing mm -hmm. and uh, you know some of the students are really They're good. Amazing. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's like yes, I've I've been at national conferences where you've showcased uh -huh. and you've pulled students up and and the audience is like, dang, you need to take that person on tour with you because yeah. they just they get it, they know it, and so and and a lot of times it's the backup singers. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so. You play a guitar that you can do the looping is what we were describing uh -huh. with the different instruments that you can pull in. So you can do a full band, but then on top of that, um, you're not pulling up an iPod to read music. No. You have this memorized. I do, yeah. I've got 82 hours of music in my head memorized. But if somebody comes up to sing with me, I have a, uh, a screen that I can give them For the lyrics them. on. Yeah, mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. live music, is is a weird thing. Mm -hmm. It's a, you're you know anything live. Your mind will play tricks on you. You know you'll get distracted. You'll be you'll be like okay something you see something off in the corner and you're like oh that's a cute you know whatever cute puppy or something. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know you're like I've got a line to say. Mm -hmm. And if you're not used to that, it you get you know so the students no need to have the lyrics no matter how well the they know the song. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, for me I think I think it's kind of like everybody asks how do you memorize so well and how do you how do you do it. You just have to let go. Um, it's like, I describe it like looking at a star. If you look at a star, um, if you're looking up at the sky and you see the, st the stars and they look really bright, if you look right at it, it almost disappears. And it's, memory is the same kind of thing. If you, if you really try, it's really hard. Mm -hmm. But if you let go and let your mind do it. And relax. Yeah, your mm -hmm. mind will find it. I mean, it's there, mm -hmm. it's, but it's kind of like walking in a fog. You just have to assume that there's 
going to be rowed in front of you and keep on going. Walking. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Or keep on singing in your Right, case. keep on singing. <laughs> the first word is the hardest word. Once you get the first word, it all rolls downhill. You think? Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, uh, unless you don't know the song. Uh -huh. But once you've done a song a bunch of times, and it usually takes about 10 times live for a song to feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Like you own it. Yeah. And uh, you never really own it. Uh, you might. <laughs> there's always, any song I've done a million times, there's always something where I can, I can you know, my mind will be like, oh, we're not going to give you this lyric. And then I just have to go, it'll be there. Just trust it. You know, okay. even songs that I've done a thousand times, my mind will sit there and go, you don't know the next line. It's, and this all happens in a millisecond. You right. Know? And then, then I just relax and it, and it, it happens. Cool. So your shows are typically about an hour and a half to two hours in length? About that, yeah. Two hours is about the most anybody wants to sit for a show. But um, it's neat how you get the audience involved because yeah. you actually ask them to write on paper the song they want to hear and then they throw it on the stage and then you just pick them up. So there's, you really have no control of the show. You're letting the audience dictate that show. Within reason. I okay. mean, I, there's, there's a little, you know, I try to make it seem so like Free it's So Freebird doesn't complete. get played at every there show. There are some songs, yeah, like, like Freebird, Stairway to Heaven, I don't do those. <laughs> um, but there's some, you know, I don't generally tell people this, but I, I do use a little guidance in, in you know, because you don't want to just do a bunch of old songs in a row, and you don't want to do a bunch of slow songs in a row. Um, but I'll, I'll generally grab like three or four post-its off the ground and read them, and whatever they pick is where we move on to. But there are ways to Segue to, to kind of yeah mm -hmm. to kind of make it work mm -hmm. and, and say hey I really like this song I haven't heard this in a while and lead in that way, and then they happen to pick that song. Mm -hmm. um, but just like everything, there's, there's an art to balancing the, it's a good live show to me is like, kind of like watching Forrest Gump, if you've ever seen Forrest Gump. The movie takes you up, takes you down, takes you up, takes you down, and by the end of it, you're kind of emotionally drained. Mm -hmm. And, and a, a good live show should do that. It, should, it shouldn't bring you up and keep you up the whole time because mm -hmm. it's hard to sustain that and then you kind of get burned out on that. Mm -hmm. um, but so you want them to be tapping their toes to some and almost wanting to cry at right, and others, and then, and then, then belt out that one song that everybody knows by Ario Speedwagon. Right, so, <laughs> I don't know if everybody on campus will know anything by Ario Speedwagon. Uh, you might be surprised. I know, you I'm know. often surprised at what they can belt out from the era of the 70s and 80s and even 60s. I know. Yeah, that is shocking. And there's a sometimes. resurgence of some yeah. of that with Sirius and and the one. One song that's come back out of nowhere was Country Road. Oh yeah. Uh, it was on some like uh, Fortnite or some some game and now everybody is asking for this song. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know for about a year why it, it had was come so back. popular. But it was like every show they're asking mm -hmm. for the song and I'm like, I thought this song died, came back, died, came back, died, came back already three times. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. like but some songs never go away. Mm -hmm. Um and then there's other songs that'll come and go, you know, like uh, Old Town Road, every, you know, because it's out now, but in six months, nobody will mm -hmm. even remember the song. You know? So what is the song that it's, it's never really died, but maybe you wish you didn't have to sing it as often as you do? Oh, people ask me that one a lot. Um, there are a lot of songs that are like that. <laughs> um, well, in some of them, the chord progressions are so similar that in, in like when I'm listening to some Elton John and then I'm listening yeah. to some um, of Billy Joel, there yeah. are times where the intros, I'll start to listen and I'm like, and you start to uh, sing the Billy Joel part yeah, on an Elton song. Of, yeah. yeah, so yeah. does that ever happen to you? Um, there are a couple times, you know, I could play you 100 songs that are all the same chord progression. Mm -hmm. um, and so the main thing, like I said, is getting that first word. Mm -hmm. You get the first word and it just kind of rolls downhill. But if you were to say which songs I think, you know, I kind of look at it like I've got all these songs. So imagine you're at a buffet, mm -hmm. like the biggest Las Vegas or cruise ship buffet you've got. You've got lobster, crab, filet, and all this. And somebody and comes up. Everybody wants the cheeseburger. Everybody all wants the a time. Big Mac, yeah. yeah. And it's like, it's like or, or a, a pepperoni pizza that's, mm -hmm. you know, probably a frozen pizza that they just threw in a mm -hmm. thing. Um, to me, that's kind of the Margaritaville, the, you know, the, those 
kind mm -hmm. of things, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> which I will play. I just played it at my last show in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Somebody came up and they asked for a Margaritaville, and I'm like, I'll play it. Mm -hmm. um, but when I started, I played nothing but obscure songs. Um, I, I was playing bars in Nashville and Alabama, and I was doing only like track 11 on an album, and only those are the only covers I was doing. Then I realized nobody wants that. There's right. a reason why those are track right, 11. Right. They want the popular songs yeah. that they know, yeah. and and I I want to try to work in, you know, maybe some some cooler songs in addition. Not to say those songs aren't cool. They're, they're popular well, for a reason. Well, but to refresh, but, yeah. refresh people's taste buds in music. Right, to, to throw in well, some and, spice to it. And other you've than done just that a little pepper. bit because you've added some of your originals to your work yeah. also as you've traveled and toured. Because this isn't something where you just picked up the guitar six months ago and said, I'm going to memorize 82 hours no. and go <laughs> no. out and do this because I've been playing in Nashville for six months. This is, this is a passion and a love of yours that started many years ago. Oh yeah, yeah I started guitar, I started music when I was nine, really, doing music um, with a string bass and the clarinet. And then my brother thankfully saved me, he gave me a guitar. <laughs> I mean, there's no clarinet work. There's no, you know, I actually... <laughs> yes, but those horn sections you do I, uh, with the looper, you have a better understanding because of that. I do have, yeah, it does help my knowledge of music. Mm -hmm. But I did a job in college um, with a, a landscaping job for almost minimum wage. And hard, back-breaking kind of work. You know, mm -hmm. wake up at 6 in the morning, on site at 7. And I was working with this guy and, and got talking to him. And, and this was when I was a classical guitar student at the University of Georgia. And I said, well, I almost went to New England Conservatory, but I couldn't afford to go to Boston. And I, and I got a partial scholarship. And, and he's like, oh, that's cool. I, I have a, my degrees from New England Conservatory. And I, he had a master's in clarinet performance. And he was doing And he yard was work. doing yard work for almost minimum wage that, you know, was my my summer college job that I hated mm -hmm. and and he's like why are, you know, go ahead and ask the question you want to ask mm -hmm. and I'm like well, what question is that he's like why am I doing this job he's like there's no work <laughs> mm -hmm. um, there are more jobs in baseball than there are in music and it's unfortunate anybody out there majoring in music I apologize to you and I'm gonna break your heart right now two words double major um, I have a business degree I have a music degree um, neither one of them really is being utilized in the sense that I don't I don't have to have either one to do what I'm doing, right. but it certainly helps to understand the business side mm -hmm. of, of things. Well, both of them have made you a success and made you um, an icon in the college <laughs> circuit because I met you. Oh, we won't say that. Years yeah, ago -ish. It was, it was, it's been a while. A couple of years. Yeah. Couple of years. <laughs> and and so, but that that's what I'm saying. It because you had the business degree you had that knowledge and then you had the passion for the music, you're still doing this where many people will think up a way to create a field of music for themselves, but they burn out. Yeah. And we were talking about that before we came on camera, that there's a system to the touring, there's a system to the marketing, there's a system to who you choose to represent you as an agent. Uh, you've <laughs> got to do, you've got to figure all of that out. It's not just jump in the car, show up, do a job, and be famous. No, that would be great if you could just, <laughs> uh, musicians talk about it all the time, if, and, and every, you know, even, I have a friend of mine who's a therapist, and, mm -hmm. and we went to school together, and he spends more time on marketing mm -hmm. than he does on therapy, mm -hmm. because he's got to get clients. Mm -hmm. um, and everything you do comes down to sales. Mm -hmm. My job is sales. And it's, it's a hustle. Yeah, and it's, you know, if I just played music, it'd be so much better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, the music would be better, everything mm -hmm. would be better. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. I mean, it, you put up with all the other things to do the one thing you love to do. Sure. Um, I get paid to play guitar. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get paid to travel and play guitar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you get paid to entertain with that, so yeah. it's so that the entertain audience too, is participating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which uh, there's a lot of artists that they don't want that part of it. Right. You know, that scares them to have people throwing something out or to know that they have to keep 82 hours fresh in their mind. Right. And, and that's a gift that you have that you're like. Pfft, this is what I do. Yeah, I just, so. I got lucky. I, I mean, I, I got lucky that I could sing. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't work at singing. I mean, I did in the sense that I, 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 I knew I could sing when I started singing, but I was not a singer. Um, you got your chops I mean, with the practice. It, with doing it mm -hmm. so much, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I worked really hard at becoming a guitar player. I mean, it just, it, nobody's born playing guitar. 
Uh, well, and you're very talented at it. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Now, our, our viewers enjoy getting to know the artists beyond the stage. Okay. So I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. Right. Um, are you a dad? I am a dad, yeah. As much as I try to keep my, my normally, you know, I don't mind here, but to keep my, my home life completely, yep. you know, from my, my Work. job life, yeah. No, I'm a, I'm a dad. I've got two little kids, mm -hmm. um, both adopted. Uh, my daughter is adopted from China. My son is adopted from Alabama. Uh, my wife says they're both from third world countries. <laughs> I grew up in Alabama. Yeah. She's not a fan of Alabama. Um, sorry to my in -law, or my family, her in laws. Um, and uh, it's hard to be a well, parent. Well, yeah, because you're on, a, on the yeah. go all the time. It's hard enough to be a husband on mm -hmm. the road. Mm -hmm. um, she used to go with me everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, and she was like my tour guide. We went, God, I mean, we, we joke that we, when, if, you know, I'm ever able to retire, we will have to go somewhere else because we've done all the touristy retirement things. Mm -hmm. When I first started this, we were the youngest people by 30 years wherever we went. Mm -hmm. There would be tour buses of people coming out to see the Amana colonies in Iowa. And, uh, and nobody does that in their 20s. Yeah. You know? like, but you happen to be but, touring, well, we did, so yeah. why like, not? And, and, you know, <laughs> we didn't make any money because all the money was spent you know, you go into Boston for a day, you spend $100 just in food, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you spend 35 in parking, you spend more in hotels. Um, but then it goes back to the memories and, and what you share yeah. together. And it goes back to being a gypsy musician. That's <laughs> kind of the passion and the love of it, right? You make enough to get to the next stop and discover something new. That's part of the, I, you know, I have friends of mine who, who kind of live in a, in a weird way, they like to live through what I'm doing. Vicariously. Just watch, yeah, mm -hmm. just, you know. Um, they see you as brave. They, yeah, and it, it, at least somebody's still out there daring to, to, uh, to do it. I don't know, you know, mm -hmm. they've all taken real jobs and they have mm -hmm. real lives and, and they don't want me to stop. Whether, you know, I had a friend of mine and he, he is in sales and he does really well. And, and he could have gotten me a job in sales, and I could have probably done really, really well. well. And all my other friends were trying to talk me out of it. Yeah. Because they lose their dream of, you know, mm -hmm. it's somehow they don't want it to die. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, I don't know, and, and maybe it's my sacrifice to keep going. I don't know. But what a compliment to you also. Yeah, you know, yeah, that they want to. They yeah. want it, and, and people are still booking you. So yeah. it's a compliment all the way around. <laughs> You're doing the right thing. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> I'm doing something. <laughs> <laughs> it, it sustains itself, and, it, and it, you know, I don't know. It's, it is what it is. You know, it's like it's a way to play music. Music is like a drug. It's, you know, there's some people that fish. Mm -hmm. Some people spend all their money on their fishing boat and all that. Mm -hmm. Like the... Um, What's that Brad Paisley song, I'm Gonna Miss Her, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, there's a lot of musicians like that. A lot mm -hmm. of people have broken up with countless numbers of wives and girlfriends mm -hmm. just so they can't mm -hmm. give up the music. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, that's very true. Um, in addition to the touring and the parenting and the husbanding, <laughs> you also are doing things with social media. And one of the things you're doing is really cool. And, and I want you to talk a little bit about that because that's, okay. you're teaching guitar mm -hmm. on YouTube. Not yet, but I'm about to be. I've done all the, the legwork for it. Okay. Um, well, not all of it, but I've done a lot of it. Uh, I'm about four years into a five-year plan. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not actually gonna be on YouTube uh, even though, you know, you'll probably be able to the access promo some of will be, yeah, yeah. The promo will be on YouTube. But uh, uh, it's called GorillaGuitar.com, and just, you know, like a gorilla, you know, because nobody can actually spell the other gorilla, the G-U, G-E-U, uh, yeah. I can do it anyway. Um, and it's catchy, and it, um, but the idea is that you log on, you know, it's a membership site, you pay nine ninety five a month, uh, so for $10 a month, you get to access everything I've ever learned. Um, and it's all high definition cameras, three, three cameras, one on the left hand, one on the right hand, and one front on, so you get to see everything that's happening with um, uh, chord diagrams and everything that goes with that. Um, but it's a lot of work. I mean, it's, it's like, I mean, imagine trying to it's teach somebody love. Spanish or something, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you've got to do a video for everything. Everything. Every word, mm -hmm. every, um, and so. And why you have to cut your fingernails. Right. And why <laughs> Well, these yeah. nails I keep long for picking the, the strings. Right, right. Yeah. And everything from how to hold a pick mm -hmm. 
-hmm. You know, you have to assume that they know nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, and then because if they, they know a little something, they can fast forward. They can move that. on, yeah. Mm -hmm. to, and it, and they're all. I, I, the the key is to do micro lessons. Mm -hmm. Nobody has the attention span for a, an hour long lesson. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I was a kid, I paid twenty bucks a month, um, or I'm sorry, twenty bucks a week mm -hmm. uh, for a guitar lesson, for a thirty minute one on one lesson mm -hmm. with my teacher. Um, and I forgot about eighty percent of that by the time you, you got know, outside. I, yeah, yeah, I walked out the door. <laughs> um, and I paid $80 a month for that. Mm -hmm. and, and it was great, but my mom had to get in the car, drive me across mm -hmm. town. Um, and now you can just go online. You can, at two in the morning, you want to go learn a new song, you want to go learn a new chord, you do it. But everybody's like, why not just click on YouTube for that? Well, you can do that, but YouTube is all about clickbait. Mm -hmm. um, if you wanted to learn Spanish, you wouldn't learn it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You'd go buy Rosetta Stone or a real mm -hmm. course that's actually going to show you step by step. Mm -hmm. It'll be a lot faster, be a lot better. Um, if you want to learn guitar on YouTube, you'll learn the top 10 guitar licks from 1990s. You'll mm -hmm. learn, you know, these bits and pieces. Yeah, it's like going to the the and it's the not fair. the technical. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're not going to learn the real how to really play guitar. You're going to learn, you know, if you want to be a glam player. I don't know, in your basement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or the garage band that never leaves the garage. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of those, mm -hmm. you know. And some of them are really good. Mm -hmm. you know? But they still don't leave <laughs> their garage. <laughs> there was a, a, a pedal that I used to use, uh, and it would break all the time. And I, I would get on the, it was Gibson made it, and I, would, I kept calling the guys from Gibson saying, hey, why can't you fix this and make one that'll, that'll hold up? And they kept blowing me off, sending me to the forum page. And I'd go to the forum page, and i explain my problem. And everybody's like, well, I play mine barefoot, and that seems to, and it's like, you're playing it in your house. Mm -hmm. I, I'm doing 200 shows a year. I can't mm -hmm. be playing barefoot for all my <laughs> shows. You know, just so, so it's that kind of thing. There's a different aspect to doing, to really wanting to know about how to do music as opposed to just being a, a hobbyist. Mm -hmm. So if people want to connect with you through social media, um, we've mentioned that you have some original music. Mm -hmm. Uh, are they able to purchase that online? They are. Um, I don't expect that they will. Um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you're, you're welcome. I don't make a lot of money off purchases anymore. I mean, I, I don't. I know the reality. I get a cert, I get a, a check every month from downloads. Mm -hmm. um, it's twenty five ninety five, right? It's, right. Yeah. It's, twenty five it's, cents. Yeah. Point ninety five. We owe right. you. <laughs> well, it, it's actually even. You know, it ends up. You see it all. It's like point oh two cents per mm -hmm. download or something, mm -hmm. and it adds up to like thirty, forty bucks a month, mm -hmm. which is a lot of downloads to make that much. Mm -hmm. But it used to be. You know, if I sold five to ten CDs at a show, and I sold mine cheap for ten dollars. That was 50 to 100 bucks every show. Mm -hmm. And so at 200 shows a year at 100 bucks, you know, that that's, was worth it. That's, yeah, mm -hmm. that's a lot of money coming mm -hmm. in. And now, you know, I don't even, I don't even bring CDs to mm -hmm. shows. I, I tell them if you, if you want to go download it, Google John Rush. Um, and that's R U S H. J O H N R U S H. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can go to johnrush.com if you want to do that. But nobody even goes to websites anymore. Mm -hmm. It's, nobody has the patience to type dot .com. <laughs> it's like, they, they Google, I'm the first one to come up if you Google my name. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but I can't tell you the number of times people are like, I couldn't find your stuff online. It's like, what part couldn't you get? All you got to do is Google my name. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, they just, all they know is, is their own platform mm -hmm. that they like, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's Banzoog or, or you know, any of the other, you know. So for someone that's listening that does want to connect with you, JohnRush.com. JohnRush.com has a link to everything okay. as far as downloads and, and purchasing. If you want to purchase an actual hard copy CD, you can mm -hmm. do that too. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, and thanks for kicking off our 2019-2020 season. It's cool. been awesome to have you here, and I'm looking forward to catching one of your shows here in the near future. Whenever John's in the area, I'm in the audience because you never know what's going to happen. It's always fun. I never know. <laughs> exactly. And um, thank you because I know that our UF TV crew is going to be able to follow you to your next set performance cool. also and, and record that. So we'll be able to share that here on online. So thank you so much for graciously allowing us to participate in that. And um, we look forward to following your progress as you continue to entertain across the country. Cool. Thanks, Trenda. And Thanks, thank Finley. you for coming out or for tuning in. He came out. 
uh, for tuning in today. We look forward to seeing you the next time on UF Art and Culture Show. Came out. Be well. <laughs> <laughs>